haven't seen this for years. This atmosphere in Sydney that is unbelievable. Everyone's up on their feet. Winnington comes away with it. Three on two, Kadeem. Back to Winnington. Wow. Oh, Great work. There are some players who are just have a unique ability to step on the court and make things happen immediately. Powell is out there now. Lish bounce back to Powell from inside three-point range. Powell. Little spin move. And it's quite a show, isn't it, tonight? Here's Powell up against Matt Knight. Well, he is unstoppable right now. Here he is, working underneath the bodies. Gets a rebound and puts it in. He's been dominant. He's a natural leader and he's just lifting this side. You can feel it. You reckon he might have a little something, something going on here a little bit more than... Come on, mate. Might need to work on those guns a little bit here. <laughs> City Kings have been dragged from the floor last season to the top of the tree, thanks in no small part to Powell Ford and two-time NBA champion Josh Powell. Hello and welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, we, we're obviously going to get into your uh, amazing career, but you've been here for a little while now. Have you got your head around cricket? I, I need to, to get my head around cricket, honestly. <laughs> I, need to, <laughs> I need to learn that game. I need to, to watch it and study it, but I definitely that's one of the things I would like to uh, be a part of while I'm here. Really? Well, well, we can help you out in that regard, obviously. Uh, we saw Andrew Gaze there. Is mm -hmm. he the most enthusiastic coach you've worked with? Definitely one of, but he, he's definitely a character, but a competitor first, and uh, I think that's a lot, of, a lot of what everyone sees, and he has a, a good time on the floor, and he definitely gets us going, and, and, you know, he's all over the place, but he's great for us, and, uh, you know, our personalities and, and a, a great player coach, so he's been amazing to play under. Tony mentioned the fact that you've had an amazing career. Two championships with the LA Lakers for um, people that are watching that weren't aware six or seven years ago. It was an amazing roster. You had Kobe Bryant, Lamar Odom was playing, Meta World Peace, I think you played with for a season. He was Ron, but, I think he was Ron at the time. He was Ron, was he? Yeah. yeah. I think, but I the, think one, at the, time, the one yeah. character or, or the one personality I wanted to ask you about was the coach, Phil Jackson. Mm. Tell us a Phil story. What, what was Phil like as a coach? Uh, the Zen master, of course. Um, so my, my first year, um, I remember uh, we, we had a little stretch where we were winning games, um, but they were kind of ugly wins. And I uh, came in one morning and you, you smell something. It's like a burning smell and you're like wondering what's going on. And, you know, Phil's just slowly walking around the entire practice facility with Sage and he's like, Got to get rid of the evil spirits. And, I'm like, <laughs> and, and that curry or something. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like, really? That's, that's kind of crazy. So, he, you know, he went from doing the sage, so we had a film session, and we get into the film session. This was my first time meditating. So I didn't know what was going on. He comes in there, and he's got his sexy voice going, and he's talking to us, and he cuts the lights down, and he's like, close your eyes. <laughs> you know, imagine that you're somewhere. And I was just like, oh, this is crazy. So. That's one of my good uh, stories. Phil, he, he, not only is he a great coach and obviously what he does there, but he's also good at making it look like he hasn't been snubbed by Kobe, as you see in this vision here, which is terrific. Uh, going down the line, everybody getting a bit of a fist bump. I didn't get that. <laughs> not just one side. I got the other as well. Not what meant to happen. <laughs> hey, Josh, what... We... You know, you have to work so hard to get to the NBA, and we see so many films <laughs> said about, you know, kids trying to... <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? We see so many films about kids trying to get to that stage, and, and you achieve that. Do you remember your first NBA game? What's that experience like when you know that you've achieved what you've set out to do, when so many people don't? <clears throat> I mean, for me, honestly, uh, just coming from where I'm from and... Um... I had a long road. I mean, I went uh, undrafted, and uh, I, I, I've been cut and had to get back in. And, uh, you know, it just, it just makes you that much more appreciative for, you know, the opportunity and, and, and you know, the hard work and the fight and, and everything that comes with it. And, you know, no matter if it was my first year up to my seventh or eighth year, I, I was grateful for, for every time I got a chance to step on the floor and do something I love to do. Josh, that theme's interesting because, like, you've been open about at times when you could barely afford food and even sleeping in your car. What was the toughest point you reached? Is there any month or day where you thought, oh, this is, is rock bottom? Um... Now? <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was, 
It was a lot of tough times. It, it was interesting because um, my mother um, read the article and she was upset. Really? And um, I, I just had to explain to her, like, there's no knock against you as a parent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you did the best that you could do for us, and I'm grateful for that. But me telling my story was not to talk about the struggles. It was more to motivate or inspire somebody else that could be going through the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, because we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different walks. And the whole reason why I wanted to really share my story was because you never know somebody else that could be going through something, and they could be at a point where they want to stop or quit or something. But it's... You got to keep fighting. You got to keep going. You know, enjoyment is a big one for you as well. And you know, at this stage of your career, coming here to Australia, but you seem to really at the Sydney Kings, you're yeah. loving it already. You're taking videos with the boys singing. You know, in the change rooms, and we saw that at the start of the show, you went to a driving range and couldn't hit the ball with a golf club, so you just picked it up and threw it. <laughs> this is the... I love this celebration. <laughs> but you seem to be really enjoying yourself here, Josh. A great grump, a bunch of boys and really, really enjoying your time. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is my 14th year playing, and, um, you know, it's, it's not often that you're able to have an entire group of good guys, um, a coaching staff that's amazing, and, you know, that everybody's on the same page, as you can see, but... <laughs> <laughs> when I, it's funny because the first, the first, the first time uh, when we got our first win in, uh, against the Hawks and that song, I was like in shock. Like I didn't really say nothing. I was just smiling the whole time because I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> and then the, when we got the second win, I was like, I just got to capture this moment because so many different personalities mm. and a lot of times, you know, the, the supporters, the fans, the city or whomever may not get to see a certain side of certain guys. So, for me, that's why I wanted to show it. What you did know. you know of the Sydney Kings and, and Andrew Gaze before coming over? Was it Andrew that gave you a call? I knew about, uh, you know, the, the city of Sydney. Um, I knew about, you know, how it is as, as a country here and um, just all the great things that I've heard. I mean, I didn't really know too much about the basketball side of it. Um, but this, this is a, a talented league. Don't, don't get it twisted. I understand that, you know, it may not be as popular, but it is, it is a great league with a lot of talent. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of, of the NBL and, and the Sydney Kings and for the opportunity. And how far can the Kings go? They, as we said, they get climbed from the floor from last season, sitting there at the top. Uh, how confident are you as a unit? I, I think, you know, the, the goal is to, to, to win a championship. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that if we didn't aim for the best, then we shouldn't be doing what we're doing at the end of the day. The mannequin challenge, I don't know if we just got quickly, you might be able to show that. I don't know if you were part of it, but certainly the crowd got into it. This is brilliant. This is before a King's <laughs> So y'all miss, y'all, hold on, y'all, now that's, that is great. Isn't don't get me good? wrong. But you know, we did a mannequin challenge. Did you? Yeah, th we did one that, that I posted that we went to a promo and did that one first. Yeah. And then we followed up With the to crowd. show mm -hmm. Everybody in That's Sydney come and come out and do that. Well, that was amazing, by the way. Though. We're going to get that out and play that we uh, a bit later on. Because those kids did an amazing job. And what well, you're doing an amazing job, Harris, are the Kings. Get along and see them. The next home game is against the 36ers. Uh, Monday, it's at uh, Kudos Bank Arena, 7 p.m. That's the home game. Josh Powell, what an honour and a privilege to talk to you. Thanks so much for dropping in. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Josh. I appreciate there it. There we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Coming up, our champ of the week. That's next. Stick around. <laughs>